So I would like to talk about things that are happening in uh, my lab at TU Berlin. So I chose two topics. One is autonomous uh, systems, so event-based for autonomous systems, and the other one is animal observation. And the first one, it's about motion estimation. In my lab, we do a lot of uh, estimation of motion, ego motion, and optical flow. And here, basically, I just want to briefly show that we have uh, quite some results on extending contrast maximization, which is a framework for processing event data, to compute things like optical flow, SLAM, and uh, help image reconstruction. So this is extending contrast maximization to do SLAM. This is work of Shuang Wo, who is also here in the audience. And um, we are trying to basically um, do a full SLAM in the sense that we will have a front-end and a back-end. We are refining with contrast maximization both the trajectory of the camera and 3 degree of film. So we have a rotating camera and the map. This is with the DB Explorer with VGA resolution. And once you have the trajectory, you can, if you want, obtain the panoramic images that we all know in grayscale. The method works quite well. Even when you have the sun and the field of view, you have this glare effect, the optics works quite nicely with 360 degrees. And the nice thing is that we try to do this in a principal way so that we can apply it to other scenarios like s sky mapping or star tracking. The second one is the work with Schumann Gosch, who is also here. Um, we do stereo. So on the last column here is the, the output of our stereo method, where we are extending the monocular one EMVS and we are comparing with the ground truth from the LiDAR and ESBO. We see that we obtain better completion, um, and we can even get depth when the LiDAR doesn't provide us with that. Compared to previous methods, we get more uh, recovered points, and the good thing about stereo is that you get more accurate depth estimation, faster convergence because you have a spatial baseline, and you can also get rid of outliers that you will have with monocular methods. The code is available. Yeah, you can try it. This is the previous one is a sequence from the DSEC data set. This is from the one megapixel uh, camera data set from TU Munich. Here there is no ground truth depth, so we cannot directly compare with, with uh, ground truth data. Um, the method requires the poses, and in this case the poses are provided by a motion capture system inside the room. Outside the room, we get the poses from another visual uh, odometry method, then we can still use it to try to obtain depth in this kind of complicated scenario where you are moving forward in a kind of narrow corridor. It also work outdoors. Um, yeah, the goal is really, the question was how to fuse the data from the two stereo event cameras, and we don't do any data association or correspondence between the events. We basically build disparity space images, and we fuse them with some harmonic mean, uh, which is quite nice theory. Um, the third one is uh, contrast maximization for dense optical flow. This is the work of Shintaro Shiva, who is visiting from Keio University. And the last column shows uh, the estimated flow and the image of warp events that it's supposed to be as sharp as possible. Basically, we try to estimate the flow that gives us the sharpest image of warp event um, because we are achieving event alignment. We compare in this MVSEC data set from uh, Costa's lab. Uh, we compare with uh, previous solutions like EB FlowNet and unsupervised method. Our method is model-based, but once we know what we need to optimize, then we can transfer it to the unsupervised domain. So basically, we uh, try to investigate what is a good loss function to do optical flow and then use it for training. And we tried it on MVSEC, and it also works quite nicely on, uh, on the DSEC dataset. Here, this is the data from the DSEC from uh, David's lab. And um, we compare with other solutions like supervised method eRAFT. The data set doesn't contain the independently moving objects, so our method doesn't rely on any labeling. So we are still able to get um, accurate flow and sharp images even in those independently moving objects. Okay, the next idea I want to show is that once you know optical flow, it can facilitate image reconstruction. So typically, you will see many of the image reconstruction methods work like this. They convert events into a voxel grid, and then you pass it through a neural network like E2Bit or other FireNet and so on. Um, but then we don't know what's happening inside the network. Instead, the, 
if you know the events depend on the motion so motion and brightness are intrinsically related in the events and uh, what we kind of advocate for is another pipeline that will have a bit more modularity in it and out of the two problems if you have to compute from a single event from the events both things the optical flow and the brightness computing the optical flow is much more difficult and once you know the optical flow, you can compute this image of warp event and go into the absolute intensity, it's basically solving a linear system of equations. Uh, so that's kind of what we do in this one that was recently accepted at PAMI. And when we compare our solution with the previous one, we see that they are on par. You know, the, the metrics are it's difficult to tell um, because they are biased, but just wanted to put it forward. And then animal observation, this is the work of Fritelm Hamann, who is part of the Science of Intelligence Excellence Cluster. We have in, in Berlin, we are trying to um, analyze natural intelligence, understand it and replicate it with a synthetic agent. With this, and currently what we are doing is we are recording with a co-capture system that has both frames and events, as you can see on the bottom left. We are recording fish and we are recording mice and uh, other animals like birds and we are the first step is quantifying animal behavior this is something that uh, I think Costas is also working on in the UPenn aviary and that's it so if you want to know more I hope you have the chance to talk to the students at New Berlin thank you very much